Hawk identification made easy. Today we're going to talk about what defines a hawk, how they fit into our other birds, different types of hawks you might see, and then five keys to look for for identification. So we're going to be using the bird board. That's what I have over here. In this video, if you like this kind of teaching, let us know. We'd love to do more stuff like this. Kind of want to try it out and see what everybody thinks. But let's start off with what defines a hawk. Where do they fit into our category of birds? So let's start with the idea of raptors. And I have that in quotation marks because there's actually debate on what makes a bird an actual raptor. So in general, raptors kind of refer to birds that are characterized by having sharp talons, a hooked beak, good eyesight, and they likely consume other animals. So that's kind of your general idea of raptors. Like I said, there's a lot of debate. But in our category of raptors, these are some ones that you might see soaring. So it's good to kind of know that they exist. You have the vultures. They normally fly with a dihedral wing shape. So it's that V-shaped pattern. And the two you see in the US are the black vulture and the turkey vulture. So we have a whole video of identification between black vulture and turkey vulture if you wanna learn more about vulture identification. Then you have your eagles and ospreys. Eagles have super long wings and the bald eagle flies flat, and the golden eagle has that dihedral pattern, so their wings are gonna be up in that shape. And then you also have the ospreys, they are fish specialists, so they're normally by water. They're brown and white, they fly with a very specific shape, and they'll often be fishing. Then you also have the kites. They're very streamlined and dynamic with very um, pointed wings, and they'll do this thing called kiting. Other birds will do it as well, but they will actually hover in place, you often see that with uh, kites, but other raptors do it as well. And there is a couple different species of kites in the US. Then you have the falcons known for their speed and also their streamlined wing patterns. They will often be perched up looking for food. They will do some crazy dives to catch it. You have the peregrine falcon, which is very famous. The American kestrel, uh, the merlins. Those are some of the falcon species. And then I also have a category for other, which includes things like the northern harrier. So we're gonna be focusing on these in red here, the hawks, which we can break down into some more categories and our Northern Harrier in our other. So in the hawk category here, you have the Buteos. These are gonna be your more broad winged, normally soaring hawks. You'll see them overhead, medium sized tail. It's kind of your general hawk shape, which we'll talk about more later. Your accipiters that are a little more streamlined with a longer tail. And they're kind of your forest hawks. You might see some of these in your backyard, well, just one now because some of our accipiters recently got moved into this genus. So let's focus on our hawks here. So we're gonna start with our Buteos. And I'm gonna put an image of the shape that you'd expect to see with a Buteo hawk flying above. When you're looking at IDing these different hawks, you might see them soaring or sitting, and you're gonna look at different features depending on what you can see. So we're gonna kind of focus on soaring, but your most common hawk that you're probably gonna see in most areas is the red-tailed hawk. So this is hawk number one, and they can be tricky because there are so many different subspecies of red-tailed hawks. So there's some main features that if they have them, you can normally say it's a red tail, but if they don't, it can get a little harder. So some things to look for on the red tailed hawk, obviously the red tail. Adults are gonna have pretty obvious red in the feathers depending on the subspecies. So if it has a super obvious red tail, chances are it's a red tailed hawk. Also, they tend to have something called a belly band, which is a band of brown feathers that go around the stomach and it's kind of like broken up but that's a good sign it's a red tail. They're kind of chunky, kind of beefy, but there's a ton of different subspecies, like I said. So you have to be a little bit careful. If you see some of those features, you can normally say it's a red tail, but there's also like Harlan's red tails that look like other species and just ones that you wouldn't think would be a red tail. So getting pictures of any of these birds, if you're unsure, really helps a lot so that you can compare with other similar species. But this is one of the most common hawks you'll see. Especially when you're driving, you'll often see them on roadsides just perched up. So this is one you may see when you're out and about. Super common, but like I said, really variable. Can be easy to ID, but can also be tough. One other thing to mention with the red tails is in juveniles, that tail is gonna be more brown instead of red. Next up on our list, we got the red shouldered hawk. This one and adults can be defined by their reddish shoulders and sometimes they'll have more or less red. It's got a more of a reddish orange. They will also have a banded tail and black and white checkered wings. 
Sometimes in flight you can see little wing crescents, they're little translucent areas, uh, but other hawk species can have these as well, so it's good to kind of double check that. But those are your basic field marks for red-shouldered hawk. They're mainly in the east, but there are some populations on the west coast. And in certain areas, this is more your most common hawk as opposed to the red tail. They also often like to be by water. Now let's move on to the broad-winged hawk. Broadwing hawks are known for their massive migrations. So you can see groups of thousands of broadwing hawks flying over at a time, depending on where you are. And hawk migration is quite a spectacle to see. It will often occur in the spring and fall, and there are certain hawk watch areas where you can go and watch the hawks flying overhead, such as Hawk Ridge in Duluth. We have a whole video visiting their hawk weekend that you can check out if you wanna learn more about hawk migration. But they're gonna be a little more compact, brown on the top with a banded tail. And I often see them during their migration pushes. So there'll normally be a time when more broadwing hawks are coming through as opposed to other times of the year. And that's when I think the best time to see them is. Next up, we have a more Western species, the ferruginous hawk. And they're gonna have rust colored legs and shoulders with paler underparts and pretty broad wings. They're the largest beauty in North America. They're mostly found in grasslands and deserts. And when I've seen them, they've been very pale, but that color is pretty variable. Um, but one of the larger hawks you kind of see in the West part of North America and Central as well. Now we have another more Western West Central hawk, the Swainson's hawk. Swainson's hawks are medium size. They generally have a brown chest, a paler stomach, and longer pointed wings. And they also migrate in really large flocks, uh, which are also known as kettles. And as far as common hawks go, we have one more in the Budeo group, and we're gonna try to fit it in with the limited space we have down here. It is the rough-legged hawk. I think we, we did that. I think we got a little smaller <laughs> with our names as we went. Uh, but rough-legged hawks move further south in the winter, and they're often a bird of open fields or more open areas in general. And they will be perched up hunting, or sometimes you can see them soaring. And there are light morph rough-legged hawks and dark morph rough-legged hawks. These are different because they're gonna have feathered legs. So those feathers go a little more further down than they would in some of our other hawk species. Also, they normally have a pale head, dark patches on their stomach, and will often do that kiting maneuver we talked about. They're a real good one to look for in the winter, especially in those more open areas. Now we're gonna move on to our excipiters. And this would have been a lot easier until 2024, where we had some really recent taxonomic changes. So in general, your accipiter hawks are gonna have shorter wings and a longer tail, and they're gonna be very maneuverable. So these are hawks that you may see hunting at your bird feeder, and it still includes the only one we're actually gonna talk about on this list, which is the sharp-shinned hawk. Sharp-shinned hawks look extremely similar to another species called the Cooper's hawk, and they both have gray-blue backs as adults, a reddish barred stomach as adults, and fairly long tails. And they can be difficult to tell apart. The sharp-shinned hawk is in general a little bit smaller. There is some overlap with the largest sharp-shinned hawks and the smallest Cooper's hawks, uh, but they're normally gonna be smaller, a little more bug-eyed, and they're gonna have more of a hooded appearance as opposed to a capped appearance like you would see in Cooper's hawks. Now we did a whole ID tips video on sharp shin versus Cooper's hawks. So you can check that out. And it also covers uh, immature birds, which are more brown and you can tell them apart in a couple different ways. Uh, but we're gonna move on to the Aster genus, which is where Cooper's hawk got moved to. So it's actually very weird because Cooper's hawks and sharp shin hawks look so similar, so it's hard to believe that they're not more closely related. But in here we have the Coopers. They're a little more beefy than the sharp shin hawk. And in general, the shape of the Cooper's hawk in flight, because they're larger, they have a larger head, they're gonna look more like a flying T. So that's kind of your shape if you had the bird's head here, you had the wings come out, and then that long tail, they're gonna look more like a flying T. Uh, like a lowercase t or a cross, where the sharp shinned hawk is gonna look more like an uppercase t. So their head is so small, it barely looks like it's there. Then you have the long tail and wings sticking out. So they look more like 
a uppercase T and the Cooper's Hawk looks more like a cross in flight. So that's one way when people see them very quick fly by, they can kind of gauge if it's a Cooper's or a sharp shinned hawk. Also in this genus, you have the American goshawk, which used to be called the Northern goshawk. And they're gonna be very large, very fierce birds, and they can be very difficult to find. More in the West and kind of the North part of the East, uh, but adults have an eyebrow stripe, dark cap and face pattern, streaked underparts, and they are normally found in forests moving very quick and fast, and they're super bulky. Juveniles can be a little more hard to tell apart because they look kind of similar to Coopers, but they should be fairly larger in size. And then we have our category of other, and that is just gonna include the Northern Harrier. We'll see if we can fit it on the bottom of the page again. So harriers are another bird that's gonna be flying out in open fields, and they don't look like they have much of a head, and they will have a white rump patch. Males are gonna be more gray, females are gonna be more brown. Males are actually nicknamed the gray ghost, if you just see one uh, floating over the marshy area, that's where that name comes from. But a pretty distinctive shape and that white rump can help you tell it's a harrier, normally flying low over those fields. So let's move on to those keys for identification. So one of the things you're gonna to wanna to look for for hawk ID is the behavior. So how that hawk is behaving is gonna tell you a lot about what species it might be. If you're driving along and it's on the freeway and you're in the east, it's probably a red-tailed hawk. If you're in the west, could be one of those other hawk species, but also it could still be a red-tailed hawk. Uh, if it is hunting in your backyard, it's likely probably a Cooper's hawk or a sharp-shinned hawk. If it's flying over the marsh, it's probably a rough-legged hawk or a northern harrier. So looking at that behavior is really gonna help you key in on what species you might actually be seeing. Number two, size and shape. So the size and the shape of the bird is what we were talking about earlier with Cooper's versus Sharp Shin, looking for some of those features. But really wing pattern, head length, tail length, Noting all that stuff or getting a picture and being able to reference it later is normally crucial in your identifications. Unfortunately, there is some overlap with, you know, the biggest females of a species versus the smallest males, uh, like we talked about in Coopers and Sharp Shend, but size and shape is everything, especially with eliminating some of those other raptor groups and knowing that it's actually a hawk. So if it has those wings that kind of just taper like that, that's a very thin wing, but you get the idea. And you don't see any fringing on the end there. We'll just color this in then that's looking more like a falcon or a kite wing. You might see like one or two feathers, but if you see a wing that comes out and has more of those fringes, then it could be a beautio hawk. So noting the size and shape is really important in your identifications. Number three, flight style. If you're seeing a bird flying through your yard at fast speed, it's likely Cooper's or Sharp Shen, it's probably not gonna be a red-tailed hawk or those more open field species. If you see a couple birds lazily soaring, it's most likely Budios, although during migration, you do have sharp -shin hawks and coopers that will migrate and do that as well. Um, but flight style can tell you a lot about the different species, as well as also ruling out some of those others. Number four, field markings. Field markings is the thing that's gonna take you from uh, having a general idea of, oh, it's probably a Budio hawk to it's this species of Budio. So looking for those features we talked about earlier, like the red shoulders on the red-shouldered hawk, or, the, or finding that red tail or that belly band. Cooper's hawk, you're looking for that dark cap. So this is where you're really narrowing it down based on color. Also having those photos really helps a lot. And uh, taking it down to species when you start to look at those different field markings. And the final one, habitat and range. Once you think you have your hawk narrowed down, you wanna look at a range map to see, is it actually in the area? It's possible you could have a rare species showing up, but normally species hang out within their range. Uh, every once in a while they do move out though, so it's important to check. And then the habitat, you wanna make sure that that matches up too. So it's good to double check the range and make sure that that habitat makes sense. And the more that you watch hawks and the more that you watch raptors, you get a better feel for what should be in a particular area and even what time of day it might be out 
Um, in those fields, sometimes you get shorty dollars flying around. Normally there's a Northern Harrier mixed in there somewhere. So you kind of get that vibe of this bird should be in this area at this particular time and season. So there you have it. There are some keys for hawk identification with some of the common species you might see. Now keep in mind, if you live in a more specialized area, you might encounter different hawk species such as Southeast Arizona, South Texas, Southern Florida. Those other birds do move in. These are just some of the more common ones you might encounter. And I also wanted to just highlight some of the wing shapes. So I'm gonna put the graphic on the screen of the different wing shapes from the different types of raptor species that might be soaring overhead. What was your favorite tip for hawk identification? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding.